Okay, so this video goes along with the first discriminant video, and we, where we looked at and we created, oh, sorry, we found the discriminant for each of these functions. So let's just see if we can quickly remind ourselves what that was. We found the discriminant of this function to be less than zero, which should mean there are no real roots. Uh, we found the discriminant of this one here, this equation. I think we found that we did to be 40, which was greater than zero, which means there should be two roots. And this last one here, we found that the discriminant was equal to zero. So there's sort of the three outcomes, less than zero, greater than zero, or equal to zero. In this case, it means we have a repeated root. Okay, so I've got a graphing, uh, I'm going to graph these and then we can see actually what that means. So let's consider this first one, 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. And we know our discriminant is less than 0, which means there are no real roots. So if we just go and have a look here, here's that function there. Okay, I've actually graphed that. Okay, that's that 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. And you'll notice that that does not cut the x-axis. It's all the way up here. It does not cut the x-axis, so there are no roots. Okay, let's compare that. Sorry, let me just get that out of the way. Let's compare that to this function here. 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. We found the discriminant to be greater than 0, which tells that there should be two roots. So, let's go over here and have a look at what that means. And that's this function here. 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. We should have two roots. And you can see we've got one there and one there. So you can almost think of roots as being x-intercepts. We've got one there and we've got one there. Okay, now we go back and look at this last equation here. 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. And uh, we found the discriminant to be equal to 0. Okay, now we should remember that that means a repeated root. Okay, so have a think about what that might mean. We've seen no real roots does not cut the x-axis. Okay, so uh, doesn't cut x-axis when we sketch it. Oops, I got the eye. Two roots, two x-intercepts. What about this, the repeated root? Let's have a look. I've sketched that last one over here. Let's get rid of that. And the very last one here. What we can see is that the turning point or the vertex touches the x-axis. So what happens, we just sort of get one, and we say it's a repeated root. Okay, so we've just got one spot there where it touches the x-axis. So it's kind of like an intercept, but it doesn't go all the way through. It just touches and it turns around on there. So that is what happens in that last one here. Okay, when it's a repeated root, we're going to see that the function, oops, the function touches, oops, the x axis. So it looks like this. Okay, like that. Okay, two roots is going to look like this. Okay, or it could look like this. Okay, we've got two functions. And this one here doesn't cut the x-axis. So your parabola is all the way up here. Or perhaps it's all the way down here. Or anywhere it is, it doesn't cut that x-axis. Okay, so that's how we can graphically interpret the discriminant. Very useful when we come to sketching our functions.